All right, so before I start this video, I just wanted to come in and say a couple things. If you guys noticed, in the last handful of days, I've done a bunch of stuff um, on the channel. Uh, the, you know, there's a new logo is coming, a uh, new channel art is going to be coming, going to be getting an intro, all of this stuff. Obviously, the new spot, everything's changing. I wanted to get some new stuff for this year because why not, right? So if you, you go on the channel, uh, you notice there's a little join button. Um, you're now able to join the channel. There's a membership uh, little thing through YouTube that you can do. Uh, you can you can get an access to to a membership to uh, access perks and stuff for the channel. Um, so what it is is there's three uh, kind of levels here. There's rookie, pro, and all star. I kind of went off of NHL 21 just for fun. Um, but there are different prices for different months. Um, and what you can do is for a rookie um there's different things there you read through all of that you can get loyalty badges custom emojis in live chats um, members only live chats um, you can get members only chat rooms all this stuff you get early access to videos um photo status updates um and then there's also uh you can connect with me on social media which i know a lot of you do now but you will be able to do more um and i'm going to be adding more to this stuff it's not just like a one-time thing like i'm going to be adding more throughout the season i'm still trying to figure out kind of how to do everything i'm still kind of new to this stuff um but i will be adding more to this i'm going to be adding a bunch of stuff so you are able to able to join the channel now just wanted this to, uh, to uh you know put that out there for everybody if they were wondering what that was and things like that um but I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you all again soon. All right, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris, and today I am back with another video here. And this morning, the Flyers have re-signed one of their RFAs uh, here on uh, August 9th. Carter Hart signs a three-year deal worth $3.979 million. That is the AAV. Uh, that was a nod to a sweater number 79. That's a tweet there from Chris Johnson from this morning. Uh, another tweet from Elliot Freeman. It sounds like approximately $4 million, so it's a little bit under. Um, $3.979 million AAV for three years for Hart. So he doesn't get the big bucks yet, and I didn't think he would, obviously coming off of last year. And everybody knows how last year went. Um, so my wonderful podcast partner tweeted this out this morning for me because I was trying to figure it out, and it's not updated on Cap Friendly Left. Is how much cap space did the Flyers have left now? So, what did they have before this? They had eight million ten thousand four hundred and seventy seven dollars. Now they have four million thirty one thousand four hundred and seventy seven dollars in cap left for the Sanheim deal. Now, before I get into the Sanheim deal and all the arbitration talk and everything that I wanted to bring up about that, I'm going to talk about Hart first. As for Hart, I don't want to get you know, two numbers talk with Hart because obviously last year wasn't great, but he didn't have the best year. Um, he had, you know, an, an 877 save percentage, 3.6 goals against average. Um, you know, he was 9 11 and 5, all this stuff. I'm, I'm not going to get too crazy into the numbers and breaking down all everything. Um, you know, but again, uh, he's played over 100 games in the league. Uh, he's about to turn 23 on Friday. Hart is, you know, he is the guy for the Flyers. He's the franchise goaltender. I think it makes sense that you didn't pay him the big bucks now. Obviously, after last season and now everybody kind of saw how that was. That was kind of obvious. I'm not worried about Hart this year. I'm not at all. Um, you know, I, I think he's one of those guys he wants to bounce back. We've seen it before with the way that he's played and he's had some rough games. He comes out the next night, um, he puts out a shutout or he has, you know, you know, 25, 30 saves. He has a really good night. He did that earlier in the season this past year, had a really rough outing and then he came out, had a shutout. Um, but again, you know, he's, to me, I think in the next handful of years, he's going to be one of the best, best young goaltenders in the NHL. I mean, as I said, he's turning 23 on Friday. He's still very young. Um, and again, he's, he's done a lot of good things. As I said, he's had over a hundred games played already in the league he started 95 of them um so he's had some really good solid numbers for being a very good young goaltender um and again i think he's going to be one of those guys this year that you really like to see carrying the load i don't know how many games he's going to get um i'm not sure how that's going to work for the flyers this year we heard that from chuck fletcher because um with the way the schedule is and the way with the the flyer schedule they have some really tough road trips i know fletcher was saying they have like five games in like a seven night span um all this stuff so we're gonna have to wait and see how that happens throughout the season but I do think Hart is going to be one of those guys that really does have a bounce back year. Um, I think from the and, and not even just that too. I think some of the stuff that I said before about Hart with you know I a lot of it was on the D. That that was my thing. I don't necessarily think majority of that 
was on him. I think a lot of that was just really preventable stuff that could have helped with the D, but that's fine. As for the defense and as for the offseason, I think if you're Hart, I wouldn't be, you know, I, I think he's ecstatic to come in. I mean, I mean, th I mean, think about it. Like, you look at it and you look at the way that your GM just kind of changed everything and kind of just switched up shop and all this stuff from building from the third pair up from Yandel to Ristolainen to Ryan Ellis, trading away Voracek, you get Atkinson, you add some new voices in the room, you help out defensively, you help out your PK, all this stuff. So if I'm Hart, and not even just Hart, all the players, I'm sure they're all really excited for coming into this year. Um, and again, but I'm more I'm more than excited for Carter Hart because I think he's going to be one of those guys that really has a breakout season here. Um, and he's going to definitely, I, I definitely a bounce back year. I just can't see him not having a bounce back year. Um, so again, I think we're going to have to wait and see what happens here with how many games they play and all this stuff. But again, very excited for Hart this year. Now, getting into that and getting into the other things that the Flyers have to do, as I said, they have a little over $4 million in cap. Um, Sanheim filed for arbitration. What is arbitration, you may ask? Arbitration uh, in the NHL, salary arbitration is what it's called. It's both the player and his current team submit their expectations for the player's salary for the coming year. Uh, the arbitrator, which is a third person, they hear the case from both the player and the team and they render a verdict. The verdict sets the salary. Uh, the team is required to pay the player. So it's essentially a third person party comes in, listens to both sides and makes a deal and they have to agree on it. That's pretty much what it is. Um, so what does that mean for Sandheim and the Flyers? So this is a article uh, from Jordan Hall. I'll put a link to this in the, in the description below. Uh, with the Flyers filing for arbitration, the club and Sandheim's representative can go to a hearing overseen by an independent arbitrator to settle on a salary. Uh, arbitration hearings are set to begin August 11th, so in the next coming days here on Wednesday. Uh, the Flyers Sandheim. The Flyers and Sandheim's uh, hearing date is August 26th, which is the last day. So my guess is Sandheim's probably going to sign the day before um, the arbitration date. That's usually what happens, it seems like, a lot of the time. Uh, General Manager Chuck Fletcher and Sandheim side can still negotiate and strike a deal before then. That often, often at times happens. Um, but every case is different, and every club uh, elected filing is much less common than player elected arbitration. So we're going to have to wait and see what happens here. Um, but it makes me wonder if a smaller move is made to maybe free up some cap. Because think about it, if Sanheim gets, I don't know, maybe 3.7, the Flyers only have like a couple hundred thousand there in cap space. Um, so we're going to have to wait and see what happens. I mean, Sanheim right now is coming off the two-year deal with 3.2. I would assume he's going to make more, um, but not much. I think at max he makes a $4 million. So I, it makes me wonder if the Flyers do make another move. Um, but I don't think the Flyers are in any rush, and I don't blame them. Um, I think I think we kind of knew this from when Fletcher was kind of saying that the RFAs and stuff are going to come after everything is done, and I think that's kind of what you're seeing now, um, and that was kind of obvious as well. So now we're just going to have to wait and see. Let me know your guys' thoughts below on Hard Steel. Um, I'm still putting everything together for the channel. I'm still am putting some stuff up here. I got some new stuff coming. Um, so definitely stay tuned for that. Remember, guys, podcast articles, those links are on my channel. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll see you guys in the next one, and goodbye.